we're out here. Yes. And it's almost Halloween. Oh, yeah. So, as if it couldn't be spooky enough. Right. We have hanging real spiders. In the middle of the road. That are about this size. That are the size of a 50 cent piece or yes. bigger. Burmese pythons. Burmese py pythons. Hurry up. I got him. <laughs> Eradication is because they have ruined all of the um, glades area because the the, um, the Everglades area. Yeah, the Everglades. Mm -hmm. That's the wetlands and marshes, swamps, and, swamps. and everything, because they have eaten everything, and they're invasive animals, gotcha. mammals, to uh, Florida. So they're like on the top of the um, rung right now. Right. No, a man is the only one. Man and gators sometimes. Right. Are the only ones that take out pythons. And I've seen that they can give a gator a run for its money. Too. Oh, absolutely. One python swallowed a gate. I know. What is it? Good spot to look. <sighs> this is crazy. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, literally. And uh, um, it's creepy. Hatchling season is pretty much over, but um, we could see a one year old or a two year old out here. But when they're hatchlings, they're 20 inches long, approximately. And then, the, like, the one I just caught um, the other night was about four feet long. That's probably, like, a two-year-old. And obviously, they're finding food out here, even though we're not seeing anything. There are rats out here, but we're not seeing what they're eating. Gotcha. 
And how many eggs uh, can they lay like a year? Approximately. Oh, well. Or the, what's the 40. Time? They usually. 40 a year? Yeah. Yeah, they usually um, approximately 40 eggs. Not all of them will be viable, but um, pretty much that's and, how many hatchings come out. And so you said before, they have no real uh, predator, natural predator? Exactly. We we are their predator. We are the only thing. Okay. And gators are their predator. You know, so did this, small. did this problem start mainly by domestic snakes being le released? Yes, it did. Back in the 70s is about the first time they found the pythons here in the Everglades. Okay. And um, they were from people, they were pets of peoples that didn't know they were going to get so big. So they um, would release them. And they started multiplying. But the real problem came with Hurricane Andrew in 92 when there was a snake farm at the edge of the Everglades mm -hmm. and it got demolished and all the snakes went out. So it was so, a big, huge amount hitting the, hitting the streets. Exactly. And I don't know if, you know, I mean, obviously they weren't all pythons, Burmese pythons, but they have, I think the first ones they ever saw out here were in um, 1970s. Okay, so close to 50 years ago. Yeah, in January and February. When it's cold at night, the snakes come out during the day to the streets and the levees, and then we switch from night hunting to day hunting. Or actually, it's surveying. Surveying for pythons. Gotcha. That's so what, what happens when you catch them? What's the process after that? Well, we catch them, we bag them, and then we, put, we have a box that we keep in our truck, and on the outside it says, uh, warning, do not open, you know, dangerous reptiles. So, and I keep it locked. And then we, whenever, within like three or four days, I have to drive up to Davie from my house, drive up to Davie and go to our bosses, and um, he humanely disposes of them at that moment. Gotcha. I can take the python home if I want, if I want it to skin. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we have quite a few hunters that skin their own pythons. Right. Surveying. Right, we're not hunting, we're surveying. Exactly, surveying. So, but as a licensed surveyor, you are able to harvest for their skin yes. on the, when you want to? Not when you want to, when they're <clears throat> not caught in the um, national park. Understood. So like everyone I catch in Big Cypress, mm -hmm. I can't take home and skin it and then give it to someone to make a product for me. Like another, the hunter, he makes his own stuff. Okay. At Feel the Berm. <laughs> Hashtag Feel the Berm. What advice would you give somebody who decided one day they wanted to go catch a python. Where could they go? Are they allowed to go catch pythons? And what advice would you give them? Well, I don't want to give too much advice because I don't want them doing something better than me. So uh, we don't usually tell other uh, herpers where we catch our pythons. If somebody decided one day that- They want to go herping? As an adventure. Yeah. Just got up one day and said, I want to go to get away from my nine to five. Uh -huh. And today I'm going to go see if I can catch me a python. Okay. What advice would you give them? I don't mean by like locations. I mean in the sense of, no is it a legal season? thing to do? Are you yeah. allowed to, as a regular citizen, without a license or anything, to go harvest a python anywhere in the state? Yes, you are. You are. But you have to dispatch them before you leave that area. So there's the, what they do is they go into their... Like South Florida has their designated hunting um, surveying areas. Okay. Just like FWC has ours. We overlap and we have separate. We can go into Big Cypress, which is where we are now, and drive through Big Cypress Loop Road 41 mm -hmm. and look for Python. The regular person could also do the exact same thing. We never went through a locked gate. They can come in here. Mm. They can look. If they see a python, they can grab it, but they need to kill it. Kill it. That's gotcha. the difference. I understood. It's illegal for them to take it out alive. Mm. Um, so understood. They have to either give it to another, you know, if someone they run into, they can give it to, or they can dispatch it. And so, so let me see if I got this right. Like, let's. So I get up one day, I want to, I'm a regular citizen, no license. I get up, I, I come out somewhere and I find myself a python. I can call FWC and ask them to, to take this alive. 
or no. do I have to give it to them dead? You, you have to give it to them dead. Okay, they You're won't come to, to me. The heck okay, no. so we'll kill it on. We kill yes. it where we find it, yes. and then we can call them and ask them to dispose of it for us. Or we could go ahead and take it home, harvest it. Yes. Okay. Yes. And is there a limit or a no. size? No. No not limit, at all. no size. Nope. No, so it's, it's pretty much like the same lobster. thing as uh, iguanas right now. Yes. Snakeheads, uh -huh. lionfish. Um, yeah, I did it first. I think it looked like a dead two years. years. So how many pythons do you think you've gotten two years? I've gotten probably sixty to seventy um, that I've you know that I've gotten myself, but I've assisted on like a hundred. Is this a full time thing for you? No, it's yeah. not. No, I thought that. Uh, no, it's not. This is only my hobby. Okay. I just happen to get paid to do it. Gotcha. And we get paid minimum wage. In here, in Big Cypress, I get paid $15 an hour, and then $50 per snake, with $25 for each foot after four feet. So, you know, an eight foot snake would be whatever the math is. Right, so you know, <laughs> put the time in. Sure, if you put the time in, you could... Uh, right time of the year when the hatching... Yeah. So that's summer, basically, right. summer, fall. Yeah, and then in like January, February, when it gets cold, mm -hmm. then um, we start hunting during the day because the snakes, the pythons come out during the day because they're cold. Here's this car. <laughs> Check out this car, folks. <laughs> <laughs> 